graded midterm. And then the solutions, I didn't bring hard copies of the solutions. They're uploaded. Or whatever. They're available on the website. And I think I'll make some hard copies for people. They go on for about six or seven pages. They were prepared by uh, Gautam Kumar, one of the TAs in the course. Um, Last time we defined capacity, we looked at it in two different ways, uh, both the operational and the answer. And uh, today we're going to prove the joint AEP, which is the secret to everything, not only capacity, improving capacity. So we'll actually show the achievability of any rate less than uh, the capacity of the channel. But first I have two things I want to do. Um, let's say there are 40 people in here, and that the average weight is 150 pounds. So we have 40 people. An average weight. It was, uh, what, uh, 160 pounds. How many 400-pound people could there be in this room? What, what's the highest proportion of people that could be 400 pounds or over in their weight? So we have x, there's this random variable, it's non-negative. Expected value of x is equal to uh, 160. And we want the probability that x is greater than or equal to 400. That's the proportion of people it could be. Now, this isn't well defined until we give the actual distribution, but what's the maximum this could be? Well, I can write this as the probability that x exceeds t times its mean, mu, and that's less than or equal to 1 over t. Or t, well, greater than zero. It's only interesting for t greater than one because to say a probability is less than six is not much. By the way, that brings up one of my favorite misstatements that everyone makes, including people who should know. Well, it's it's like saying it's me rather than it's I. I think it's probably not a bad thing to say. But the statement is this. You know, there's a finite probability that I'll be struck by lightning tomorrow. You see what's wrong with that statement? Yeah, yeah. All probabilities are finite. What is meant, of course, is there's a non-zero or a strictly positive probability that I'll be hit by lightning tomorrow but it comes out finite. In any case, here we are. There's the distribution that achieves this is here's mu, and here's t mu, and you have mass one over t here, and you have mass one minus one over t here at zero, and you'll see that that average is mu. And so you just, when you're greater than t mu, you're just right on it, and otherwise you're not. So 
That's it. And so for this problem, it is um, t equals a mu equals one sixty, and t is equal to four hundred over one sixty, and then t mu is 400, that's the statement here. So I have that there, so on. And so this probability is less than or equal. I mean less than or equal here. Uh, is less than or equal to this, which is two-fifths. So at most 40% of the room, could be 400 pounders, be on the football team, and if there are 40 people in the room, that's 16 people. So um, to average a weight of 160, 16 people would be 400 pounders, and the rest of you would weigh zero, or you know, epsilon. So that's it. Now, why do I uh, why do I bring that problem up? Because when we, we're going to get a, bun, a, a large number of code words, each with their lambda sub i for the i's code word, where lambda sub i is the probability of error. And the average of these probabilities of error is going to be small. So what I want to say is that therefore most of the lambda sub i's are small. The probability of their being of their being large is small. So this is called Markov's inequality here, and we'll throw away the worst half of the code words by uh, appealing to Markov's inequality to show that we only have to throw away half of the code words to make sure that the best of them are uniformly small and conditional probability of error. Now, this next thing is a little bit more than we'll be doing, but I want to show you how you can find out a lot from cards here. This is a deck of cards. All the cards are there. There are 52 cards. And uh, I want, uh, let's see, somebody to volunteer to shuffle the deck. Will you shuffle this deck? Uh, you can even get up there. And deal them. Uh, who, wanted, who will receive the cards? You're going to deal five cards. All right. Deal five cards to him. All right. All right. Now, don't show them to me. <laughs> uh, what's that one card? Oh, you had a burn card? Oh, uh, I see. Okay, good. Now, uh, what I want uh, him to do, you to do, is I want uh, you to hold back one of the cards and give me the remaining four. All right, don't show me the one you held back. This is the remaining four. Now, the cards are three of diamonds, seven of hearts, seven of spades, and nine of diamonds. Isn't it obvious by looking at these that the card that was held back is the four of diamonds? Hold it up. <laughs> All right. Should have burned two. <laughs> <laughs> right. So where's the weak link here? Uh, did you cheat when you dealt? 
well, let's have another dealer. <laughs> uh -huh. Deal. Uh, uh, oh, and here's the card. We'll put those near the bottom. You don't need to shuffle again. You can if you wish. I deal five cards to him. off the top of the deck. All right, now, remember, the goal here is for him to hold back one card and give me the remaining four. And uh, from those four, I'm to determine which card he held back. Now, I have a big advantage. There were 52 cards, and I'm seeing four of them. So there are only 48 possibilities for what's left. Three of spades, nine of clubs, five of hearts, ace of diamonds. Nine of spades? <laughs> right. So the weak link is not the dealer. So some of you may suspect uh, that Bobby turned here as... Uh, <laughs> has found a way to choose the four cards to hand to me in such a manner that I will be able to infer the fifth card. Now notice, when I see the four cards, there are 48 possibilities. Right? So I don't have, doing it by chance alone is unlikely. Right? Also, notice that if he arranged those four cards in a certain ascending order by some convention, there are four factorial permutations, so there are 24 sort of things he can indicate to me just by the ordering of those cards. But there are 48 possibilities. How does he send that extra bit? No, uh, he's not signaling me, and he's not, cards aren't upside down or anything like that. No. He, the fact is, he has five things he can do. By choosing which of the five cards to withhold, he can actually send me that extra bit. So, what's, how do you do that? So, let me leave the problem there. And I, you see how you can transmit the identity of the missing card next time. And next Tuesday, I'll answer questions about that and so on. Right. So that would be an example of channel coding in which uh, there is, uh, well, a great restriction on what you can send, uh, if you wish to side information uh, on the channel. So what you're sending is four cards in some order, and uh, you're getting through uh, log 48 bits of information. In fact, you can do it with a bigger deck, but that's another question. That is, that's the generalization of this question. Any questions about this? All right. Last time we did capacity, operational, capacity, information. Uh, C, uh, we indicated that they're equal. We defined lambda I, the probability of error. Uh, if you send the ice code word, lambda I super N to be the max of the lambda I's and P, E, N 
to be 